Good evening, everyone. My name is Melissa Hosick, and I'm the adult programming librarian at the East Brunswick Public Library. Tonight, we're excited to help continue our Explore the Outdoors series this summer. Um, before I introduce our presenter, I want to let you know that this program is sponsored by the Friends of the Library. They do fundraising for us throughout the year. Maybe you've gone to one of our book sales. It's in October this year, by the way. Um, there's going to be actually a family fishing day coming this September. Maybe you'll be inspired to attend that. So if you would like to join them and learn more, you can go to ebpl.org forward slash friends or text ebfol to 44321. So without further ado, in this program about fishing in New Jersey, Stephen Adamo Jr., also known as the line cook, there is a pun there if you didn't figure that out, he's going to talk about fishing in New Jersey, both fresh and salt water, and there's countless different species of fish you can catch all over this amazing state. So he's going to help you learn more and where to go fishing year round. So welcome, Stephen. Thank you so much. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the East Brunswick Public Library for reaching out to me for this, giving me the opportunity to talk about fishing in New Jersey. It's something I'm really passionate about. Thank you so much, everyone, who has attended this event as well. And as I go through the presentation, feel free to drop any questions there in the chat function. And when we get to the end of this, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. <clears throat> So for those of you who don't know me, once again, Melissa did introduce me. My name's Steve. I have a channel on YouTube called The Line Cook. On this channel, I basically do all types of fishing around New Jersey, fresh, salt water, year round. And um, I have videos on my YouTube channel about fishing and cooking. Um, I'm actually a personal chef, I'm classically trained in, in French cuisine. And um, a lot of the recipes that I come with on the channel, I, uh, I post them. There are a lot of catch and cook recipes, so you can find me fishing and you can find me cooking my catch all around New Jersey. Um, with that said, a little thing about me, I am not a fill the cooler type fisherman. So for sustainability, you're never going to see me have a, a boatload of fish. I only try to ever keep what I need. Um, and for that meal itself, you know, I won't have a bunch of fish in the freezer ever. So I try to be uh, conscious about what I'm taking from our ecosystems. So the first section we are going to have here, first before you head out on the water, you're going to need to know a little bit about licensing the regulations and laws here we have in New Jersey, where to fish, and uh, some gear that you need to get started. So those of you who are freshwater fishing in New Jersey, if you've been freshwater fishing before, you know that you need a license. Um, this is really important. If you don't have a license and you have possession of fish or you're out fishing, you can get a fine. So the, the license is cheap. It's $22.50 for the regular fishing license. Um, and for the additional trout stamp is going to be an extra $10.50. Basically what that is is just a little stamp on the license itself, as you can see right here. And that allows you to fish the trout stocked waters that we have here in New Jersey. So make sure you have the trout stamp if you're going trout fishing. Um, you can pick up any of these licenses at your local Dick's Sporting Goods or Walmart. Um, if you don't have any of those near you, you can print it out online and, uh, and it's very easily easy to get. I printed mine out. Um, once again, all these links here, I will try to make sure that I have these available for you because there's going to be some useful information that you may want to know if you're going fishing. The next section is licensing for saltwater fishing. And the good thing about this is it is completely free. All you have to do is go to the New Jersey Saltwater Registry's website and register completely free. And uh, that's a good thing. So anything you catch saltwater is, uh, is free. Now it's really important to know about the laws and regulations that we have here in New Jersey. Um, if you're going out there fishing, you can't just keep any fish that you catch. Um, fish have seasons, they have a minimum length. Um, we want to make sure that we are, um, if you decide to keep fish home, that you're keeping fish at the right length. Um, these guidelines are pretty much here for sustainability, so uh, we can keep the fish stock populations healthy and thriving for a few more, for years to come. Um, so I had that, that video there was just me measuring a fluke uh, that I caught here in New Jersey, also known as a summer flounder. We will talk about that later, 
but uh, just make sure that you follow the regulations. I left a link here for the freshwater fishing regulations and the saltwater as well. So about finding fish in New Jersey, if you're completely new to fishing, this is uh, a few really awesome resources that we have. Um, once again, there's a link there to the New Jersey Fish and Wildlife's website where you can go down and uh, filter out spots by county. So if you live in Morris County, you can find tons of ponds, lakes, and reservoirs that you can fish in. Um, Another really, really helpful app is uh, this app on the App Store. If you have an iPhone, it's called Fishbrain. And um, it's kind of similar to Instagram. It's like Instagram for fishermen, anglers. Um, it's all about people sharing their catches. Um, you can go on there, and it is a really awesome interactive map that you can find fishing waters near you as well. Even message other anglers and find out what they're catching. Sometimes they share what kind of bait, what kind of lure they're using to catch these fish, but it's just another way to be in tune with the area that you are fishing and connect with others. So next we're going to talk about gear and the first picture we're going to have here is a picture of a tackle store. You know, when you go in there, it looks overwhelming. You may not know what you're, what you're trying to get. There's so many aisles, so many different options and you kind of have like no idea where to start. Um, so what I'm here to say about that is there's only a few things you really need to get started. First one is a rod and reel, a tape measure, and just a tackle box for the fish, the species that you're going for. It's always good to have a pair of pliers if you have to take a hook out of a fish's mouth, or a pair of scissors if you need to cut some fishing line. But um, the point of the story is that tackle stores can be overwhelming. And um, if you're going to the store and you're trying to figure out what kind of gear you should get, don't be afraid to talk to someone. Someone in the tackle store is going to be more than happy to point you in the right direction for the fish you're trying to catch. Don't feel like you're alone in that tackle store. Real quick, we're going to talk about rods and reels. And some are looking at like 500, 10,000. What is that? That is just the way that reels are sized here in fishing. So a 500 to a 1,000 size reel simply just means an ultralight reel <clears throat> used for small fish, trout, bluegill, and uh, just really light fishing applications. As the number goes up, the reels get bigger. So right here I have, this is a 1,000 size reel, small reel, as you can see in my hand, small reel. You use this for trout, bluegill, and uh, type of species that you can use light line for. And all the way up to 10,000 plus, this is a 9,500 size. Got a backup for that one. This is a pen reel that I use for shark fishing off the surf. I like to use this analogy, a uh, little golf analogy, that you wouldn't use a driver if you're looking to putt. So you're not going to use the same reels that you use trout fishing the local stream as you are when you're going to be surf fishing on the beach. As the reels get bigger, the rods get longer as well, and you can work on pairing different rods and reels together. So just a general idea of what size reel and rod you need for the fish that you're trying to catch. The next part of this, before you even get out there, you, you need to know how to tie some knots. And this is a really important thing to do to make sure that you can catch some fish. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about line really quick. In this section, I'm also going to say that I'm going to stop sharing so you can hopefully see this. Make sure to have me on speaker view so you can see this full screen. And uh, you can change the setting from grid view to speaker view at the top right hand of the screen. So if you need to see me, um, give you a second to do that. We're going to talk about fishing line really fast. This first line that I'm talking about is monofilament. This is a very, very common line. It's got some pretty good stretch to it, up to like 25% in some cases, which means it has more forgiveness. It also naturally floats. So if you're using a bait or lure that stays on the top of the water, this is a good choice. It's also the cheapest type of line on the market. It's been around forever. A lot of people use this stuff. But the problem with it is the stretchiness can also be bad. It'll make it a little harder for you to detect a bite. And um, it's also much more visible in the water. 
the next type of line that you'll find at the tackle store is fluorocarbon. Now, this stuff is amazing. It's very sensitive, which makes it easier to feel a bite. The, wa the, the line basically disappears in the water. So if you're fishing really clear lakes, really clear parts of the ocean, fluorocarbon is a really good idea because the fish won't be able to see this line as much. They'll won't be spooked. Um, it also naturally sinks. So using lures that sink, using bait that sits on the bottom, fluorocarbon is a really good choice. The cons of it though, it is much more expensive than your standard mono. So a spool of fluorocarbon could be upwards of $20 as if monofilament is five to $8. So you kind of get what you pay for in that sense. Um, the last type of line is braided fishing line. It's actually the same line that I have on this big old reel here. Um, it's a really common line. It's a line made by weaving four to eight strands of, of uh, fishing line together to create a super, super strong line. It actually has a smaller diameter than your traditional monofilament or fluorocarbon. So you can fit much more of this on your spool. And because of that, there's less resistance on it so you can cast further. Um, it's a really, really popular line and a lot of people are starting to use braid. Um, the problem with it is it's completely visible. It's almost like using a piece of string for the most part. So um, you need to tie on a fluorocarbon leader, which is what I usually do when I'm fishing braid. So those are the lines. Hopefully that made sense. And we are going to go ahead and tie a knot. This is called the fisherman's knot, also known as a clinch knot. Very, very common knot here. Let's see if I can get close to the camera to do this. So this is a shark hook. Hopefully we can, uh, it, it'd be easier to see this by using a big hook. You're gonna go in through the back of the hook and we got our tag end right there in my hand here. I'll try to hold that in such a way we can see this. So I tried to practice this so we can show this. We're gonna turn this line five times. If you're, because of, I don't have real fishing line, I, I would typically do it eight times if I'm using real fishing line, but because this is butcher's twine, it's not gonna, the knot's not gonna tie as easily. For, so for demonstration purposes, we're gonna do five times. And let me just get that tag in there. So you got the tag end hanging off, there's the hook. You have a little hole there created at the bottom. You're gonna take this line, go right through that, all right, so now we're there. The line is through the bottom of that little hole we created. There's gonna be another, another um, hole at the top of this line, and that's gonna, what's gonna be what's gonna secure this knot. So you take that tag end, go back through the top. Let's try to show this. All right, we got a knot forming. <clears throat> we got a knot forming. And the standard thing to do would be to lick this a little bit, because the saliva is going to help cinch this knot down, but because this is twine, we should be able to just pull this down. There we go. There we go. And then you would just take your pair of scissors, snip off that tag end, and uh, that knot is good to go. <laughs> so that's going to be it for this section. So. You're ready to fish now. What can you catch in New Jersey? In this section, we're going to be talking about the freshwater fish, types, tips, and tricks. As far as freshwater fishing goes, one of the most popular fish to target is the largemouth bass. I used to, I started bass fishing in high school. It's really what got me into it. And, um, I used to fish local ponds with my $20 Walmart fishing combos, kind of back then. I didn't really know what I was doing, I was just happy to be out there fishing. But uh, you'd be surprised what a simple Walmart cheap fishing combo will get you. Another very beginner setup is just a standard hook with a, with a, with a garden worm. A little hook, a few feet up, you have a bobber, and you put a little garden worm on the end, go out to the local pond, and you'd be surprised what it can catch you. You can catch bass, catfish, carp, crappie, trout, pretty much any freshwater fish on a plain old garden worm. The point of the story is that as, as, as simple as it may be, you know, using worms, you just never know what you're going to get. It's never, you can never be too simple. 
Currently, I would say that I don't really use live bait anymore because I like the challenge of using different kinds of lures to produce a bite. Um, a bass, for the most part, is a predator by nature, whether it's hiding in a log, hiding behind a log, in the shade, in, in the water. It's pretty much in ambush mode, looking to just kind of bite anything that comes in its path. So a reaction strike is a very common uh, way to catch largemouth bass. Um, once again, uh, my favorite time, as you can see there, to fish for them is in the summer. You can catch these fish year round. But in the summer, a lot of people will go bass fishing. The spring and the fall can also be other very productive times. Um, rods and as far as gear goes, I just put a little description there. Hopefully you can understand from the, the rod, and, rod and reel section there of uh, how that works. So six to seven foot ten rods, reel size one to thirty five hundred and different types of line there that I personally use. And... Um, the, lure, the lures and bait, these are the top three of my favorite lures to use in the summertime. And the first one is a spinner bait. And if you've never seen one of these before, you could have possibly seen them in the tackle store, but it's basically a lure. It's got this little skirt here that kind of creates a little bit of action in the water. There are these blades on top that pretty much spin in the water as you're retrieving. And that creates a lot of vibration, a lot of spin, and the fish will really key on to this bait in the summer. The next lure that I love to use in the summer, and some of you may have read this and been like, topwater frog, frog, like what is that? Trust me, no frogs were harmed during this. A frog is a really key piece of forage for bass in ponds, and um, they feed on these. So basically what this does is you toss this out there at your local pond and lake. It suspends on the top of the water and you just pop it along like a frog. Um, what happens is sometimes you'll get a fish do a topwater strike. They will literally come out of the water, eat this whole thing, and it is probably one of the most exciting types of fishing that you can do bass fishing if you're getting on a topwater bite. The last type of bait is a... Sanko worm, a soft plastic, they're called a few different things, but um, they range from $3 a pack up to $8 a pack for the name brand Sankos that could be a little more expensive. I just like to use anything. I don't think it makes too much of a difference, but this is what one of those Sanko worms look, up, look like out of the pack. It's just a worm imitation, very simple, and I think... I would say I catch most my fish on Sankos, and a lot of bass anglers would say they catch most of their fish on soft plastics as well. So that is the Sanko worm right here. The rig it's called is Texas Rig, and you can find videos online on how to rig this because it is very easy to do. That's bass. The next fish we're going to talk about is northern pike, and... These are kind of a hidden gem here in New Jersey, so if you don't know that we have good pike fishing, now you know. Um, the, the places where you can catch them is primarily the Passaic River. There's select lakes and reservoirs where these pike are stocked and they live healthy. Um, they can get excess of 20 pounds, 40 inches long, and uh, they can get really, really big. So rods and reels are beefed up with heavier line, heavier leader to deal with these fish, which have also very sharp teeth. So using a wire leader there, as you can see at the bottom of gear, is very important so you don't get cut off by these fish. My favorite time to catch them is in the spring because these are cold water fish. They thrive off the cold water, they're more active. In the summer, they start to get more lethargic. So fishing in the colder times of the year for pike it's a really, really, it's, it's a good idea to fish during that time. The fishing game actually stocks pike into the Passaic River each year. They stock thousands of, they're called fingerling pike. They're about eight inches long, and they stock a bunch of these into the Passaic River. I would definitely advise that you don't eat anything you catch out of the Passaic River. It's, uh, it's getting better. It's polluted, but it's, it's getting better. Um, I just pretty much catch these fish for the sport of it only and release everything that I catch. So if you're going for pike, I definitely don't advise that you eat pike out of the Passaic River. Um, as far as lures go, 
I like to use a few different things. The first one on there is swim shad. This swim, this uh, type of bait imitates a bait fish swimming in the uh, Passaic River very well. There's a few sizes of this. This may look pretty big, but if you catch a big pike, you can definitely catch a big pike on a big lure like this. So those are swim shads. The next one is going to be a jerk bait. Now this is a hard bait. Once again, a minnow um, imitation bait. And it actually, I don't know if you can hear this, it has a little bit of rattle to it. So if you're fishing cloudy conditions in the Passaic River, they'll actually hear the rattle of this and it'll bring them in a little bit. So, because a lot of fish really feed off um, sight and what they hear and uh, they just have reactions to what they can feel around them. So having a rattle kind of brings those fish in. Um, I don't have a kayak or boat, so pretty much all the fishing that I do is land-based. And now that we're talking about boats, I might mention that I get terribly seasick. So land-based fishing is what I like to do. I actually went on a charter uh, saltwater fishing two years ago, and I could say confidently that the only thing I was good for there was chumming the water, if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move on to the next fish which is rainbow trout. <clears throat> you can catch these fish on lakes, rivers, ponds, and uh, reservoirs and streams. Every year, the fishing game stocks hundreds of thousands of rainbow trout that are stocked right here in New Jersey at the Pequest Trout Hatchery. In the spring alone, around 600,000 trout are stocked all around rivers and streams, ponds, lakes, everywhere in New Jersey. Um, the typical size of these trout is around 10 and a half inches, around a half a pound for the normal rainbow trout. But uh, be on the lookout because in the spring they also stock a few thousand two to five pound rainbow trout, also known as breeder fish, mixed in. So you have a chance of hooking in a big one at pretty much any time. Come October and November, the New Jersey fishing game stocks again. So once again in the spring and then in the fall, a few times throughout the winter as well for the winter stocking. But the fall stocking for the most part is a, a time where a lot of trout fishermen are really excited because this is a time of the year where the fishing game stocks around 26,000 super-sized trout into all the rivers and streams near us. Um, these fish run 14 inches, upwards of 24 inches, and can be 5 plus pounds. So you can catch these fish in the winter, um, throughout the fall, and um, it's really uh, a, a great fishery. New Jersey also has two trout trophy lakes that they stock, one being Round Valley Reservoir and the other is Merrill Creek Reservoir, which both have a significant trout stocking population. Um, they support monster rainbow trout. One of my YouTube videos on my channel is uh, called Beginner's Guide to Trout Fishing in New Jersey. So if you're looking to get into trout fishing and you want to know a little bit more about trout fishing, go ahead and go over to that video on my channel and I'll tell you everything you need to know about trout fishing in New Jersey. Um, when you arrive to the stream, um, oh, I, I might mention on that video there is a link to the Fishing Games website where you can find trout stocked waters near you. Just like we said earlier, you can go down this list and uh, filter it out by county and uh, find trout stocked water near you. So you don't have to drive terribly far to get to a likely area. Once you show up to the area, there's gonna be a little white sign kind of stapled on a tree. This is how you're gonna know you're in the right area. So if you show up to the stream, you see that sign, it's gonna say trout stocked water. It's a very likely area for you to go trout fishing. Um, when they're initially stocked, the trout can be a little bit finicky at times. They're a little bit lazy when they're in there. They have very, very good eyesight, so using light line is a must. Um, this is one of my trout reels here that I have four pound fluorocarbon on there, so very, very light line so that these fish can't see that line as well because they get easily spooked. My favorite lures to use for trout fishing are, first one being, salmon eggs. Now, these are, let's see if we can get those. This is a really great bait. It's very simple to, to tie up this rig. It's as simple as hooking one of these eggs with a small hook, 
a few feet up, adding a small weight, just enough to drift along the current. And you cast out upstream around at 10 o'clock, cast around 10 o'clock upstream and just drift it downstream till about two, three o'clock and repeat. Trout swim with their heads upstream for the most part in current. So the idea here is as you pass that and the, your bait is drifting downstream, a trout is going to be there in the river, hopefully seeing this come towards them, and they'll run out, grab it, and um, it's a very, very effective way to trout fish for freshly stocked trout. Another bait is called a rooster tail. There's different kinds of this. Panther Martin makes a bunch. Um, you can find these in your trout fishing section in your local tackle shop. But it's basically like a smaller spinner bait. It's got one hook at the end. This uh, blade here spins in the water, creating a lot of attraction. It imitates a fly, imitates a bait fish. It's very versatile and a very common, popular lure to use in bass fishing. And I had to list this last one. You'll see me talk about this if you've seen my YouTube videos. The Rapala HJ6. I, I pretty much preach about this lure in the fall. This lure is great for getting on more of an aggressive bite in the fall. Those bigger fish are looking for a little bit something bigger to eat, and this little jerk bait will produce a ton of fish in the fall. So uh, those are my favorite baits. As far as gear goes, I ultralight rods, reels with light line, fly fishing outfits as well. And if you're fishing in the spring and the fall, having a pair of waders is a really good idea because the water's cold and you'll be able to get into some areas that you couldn't normally fish. That's rainbow trout. This video here is of me fly fishing in New Jersey. It's a common technique. My favorite technique of fly fishing is called nymphing. It's kind of the same idea as um, using the salmon egg, but casting out little tiny dry flies upstream and letting them drift down current. Same idea as the salmon eggs. Um, in this video, I'm actually practicing catch and release, and if you're looking to release any of the trout that you catch, it's a good idea to have a net because these fish are very sensitive. You don't want them flopping around on the ground. They have a protective slime coating that keeps them from getting disease. So if you can get them in the net, keep them in the water for most of the time as you're getting the hook out, you'll get a better release on it, and that fish will live when you release it. They're much more fragile than bass and other types of fish like that. So my recommendation to you is get a net if you're doing catch and release so you can protect these rainbow trout. <clears throat> Other freshwater species include the chain pickerel. This is a type of fish that you will run into when you're bass fishing at your lakes and ponds. They bite the exact same lures that they do, that bass do. Um, a lot of people see them as a nuisance because they're a little bit toothy and uh, they kind of destroy, destroy your bait, but I have no problem catching some pickerel. They're a ton of fun if you're bass fishing. Right below that is the brown trout. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to get on a good brown trout bite here in New Jersey. There are brown trout, rainbow trout, uh, lake trout, and brook trout. All kinds of trout here in New Jersey. You just have to find them for the most part um, but they are we have a, a lot of really good trout fishing here in this state especially in northern New Jersey um, the next fish there is going to be the black crappie for me this is a sign of spring um, after a cold winter crappie seem to be the first fish to start biting and you, you catch them pretty much on ultralight tackle that you'd use trout fishing small little grub imitation baits on a bobber, small little lures, and uh, they're a good way to get out of the winter and start getting your mind focused on spring. Below that we have the yellow perch, bluegill there on the top right, which is the easiest fish in my opinion to catch in New Jersey. If, you, if you're a beginner, if you want to teach someone, get someone out fishing that haven't been fishing, take them out for bluegill. It's as simple as tying a hook with a bobber, passing, uh, throwing it out there with a worm. They're usually very close to shore and it's a very fun way to fish in the summer. So you can catch tons of bluegill and take someone fishing and it's nothing worse than if you take someone new to fishing and they don't catch anything. So if you have someone completely new to fishing, take them for bluegill, also known as sunfish here in New Jersey. Take a sip of water. 
The fish below that is called the common carp, also known as carp here in New Jersey. Um, funny story about this one. I was actually bass fishing this day on a local river. Um, I, didn't, I wasn't really catching much. It was the middle of the day, and um, I happened to notice one of these carp swimming. And carp are bottom feeders. They don't eat normal things that bass and other game fish do. They don't chase lures. So a common way to fish for carp is with bread and corn. So I had a piece of my, I had my sandwich in my bag and I decided to tie on a small hook, take a little piece of bread from this sandwich and cast that out there in the river. Next thing you know, this guy bites on totally the wrong gear. I was using way too light of line and I end up having to take my shoes off and pretty much jump in the river to chase this guy downstream so I could land him. Um, it was just a crazy fun story. Um, I like to say sometimes these big fish, fish in New Jersey that elephants eat peanuts. So you can catch these big carp on literally a piece of corn and some bread. The next section here is going to be ice fishing. Now, during the cold months of the winter, we get opportunities for ice fishing here in New Jersey. I always advise that you bring a friend when you go out there and make sure that you have the right conditions. In this video here, a very common way to fish for them is with tip-ups. Basically, this is a, a little piece of line there on the bottom with a flag. And if you get a bite, this flag goes up, you run over to it, and you hand line the fish in. We're using live bait right there, live shiners. You drop them down the hole and you wait for that flag to jump up and it'll tell you when you have a fish. Um, we're, we, this day was a really, really fun day of fishing. You can find more about it on my YouTube channel. We were catching all kinds of fish. This one here was a pickerel caught through the ice. And if you guys haven't experienced ice fishing, I definitely recommend you try to get out there. It's cold. You got to bundle up. But um, it is a ton of fun to get out there ice fishing in the middle of winter. So you can catch fish year round. I always recommend that you have to have at least four inches of ice for it to be safe ice but that day we were fishing it was easily up to 10 inches of ice and you could pretty much drive an atv on it at that point so ice fishing is another thing in new jersey that we do have in the cold months of the year now the best times to fish for freshwater fish are in the mornings sunrise to late morning um, what this is a time of the day where the water and air temperatures are usually at their coolest so fish are more actively feeding you can get some of these same conditions in the evening, uh, low light conditions, um, mornings and evenings are the go-to time for freshwater fishing. On overcast days or slightly overcast conditions offer some really good fishing as well. Bass during the day are usually held tightly to cover in sunny conditions in the shade. So cloudy days, what this brings is a little bit of cover. It allows them to be more stealthy. They can ambush their prey better. They're more actively seeking food other than just being seen in the plain daylight. So these are the best times that you can fish for freshwater fishing in New Jersey. Now we're on to the next section. If we haven't talked much about freshwater fishing, we're gonna talk about saltwater fish types, tips, and tricks. So it took me a while to start paying attention to the tides. And when I did saltwater fishing, I started to catch more fish. The best times to fish is when most of the water is moving. What this means is approximately two to three hours before or after high tide. This is when there's most of the current. Those few hours before high tide, most of the water is moving in. It's bringing in bait fish. It's bringing in natural food. And uh, fish are trying to get, get a part of that. On high tide, it switches to the outgoing tide. So the water starts moving out. All that bait fish, all the stuff that is trapped in has nowhere to go but out. So fish are ready to ambush on that. Um, so those are my favorite times to fish. I'm not saying you can't catch fish on different times of the tide, but the few hours before and a few hours after high tide is the most productive time, in my opinion. Um, there are two high tides, two low tides each day, and every day they get pushed forward about 50 minutes. So it's definitely a good idea to check your local tide information online or you can get an app to tell you the tides for the area that you are fishing because bays and Oceanside are a little bit different. 
Um, with that said, um, you can also explore low tide if you want. Um, you can catch fish on low tide as well. This is when most of the water, all the water is out. It's dead low. You're able to see any structure there that you couldn't normally see on high tide. So you can remember that and come back during high tide and fish in that area because fish love structure. The first fish in this section is the striped bass. Um, where to catch them? You can catch them on bays, estuaries, brackish water. These fish live in both fresh and salt water, which is really, really cool. You catch them on the ocean surf, inlets, and piers. The striped, mi the striped bass migration usually starts around March here in New Jersey and can go all the way up until June. And the spring migration begins from their wintering quarters off of North Carolina and Virginia. As the water starts to warm up, these fish start to move up the New Jersey coast. They start to make detours in the Chesapeake Bay, the Delaware River, and the Hudson River. As these fish move up the Jersey coast, they go into their spawning grounds. And this is the point where I'm going to play this video here. So this is of the spring run. Most of the popular, most, one of the most popular ways for you to fish for a striped bass in the spring is at night. Some may think night fishing wouldn't be good, but striped bass love to feed close to shore with the cover of night on the right tides. So it, it, it's a really good way for these fish to get close to shore. They can ambush prey. They're much closer in than, norm, than they normally are during the day. So fishing the night shift, you can find me casting sometimes at 2 o'clock in the morning looking for these fish in the spring on the right tides. Um, blood worms, using live blood worms in the early spring for striped bass, using one of my favorite lures that we will talk about. Um, you definitely have to put in some time to find these fish in the spring, but when you do, it is like nothing else. Once these fish reach their spawning grounds, they end up migrating further north in the late spring, around June, they start tapering out and uh, they end up throughout the New England waters and even further up the coast of Maine. And uh, so that's the striped bass spring run. In the fall, as the water cools again, the stripers start to head south. They're anxious to fatten up for the winter, so they meet up with emerging bait pods, also known as bunker. There's a little picture there at the bottom. Bunker and mullet is a very uh, common food source for striped bass. And sometimes they can be close to shore in the fall run. You can see blitzes occur up and down the New Jersey coast and birds diving on the surf trying to get some of this bait, fish exploding. It is an amazing time of the year to fish the fall run here in New Jersey. That little pic that picture there on the left is of me during the fall run fishing an open sandy beach. Once the fall run, the fall run kicks off in I think about October and goes trickles, trickles down through um, December and January as the fish start to move down back to Virginia and North Carolina where they spend their winters. Now with that said there are holdover bass. These are some of the striped bass that were born in those rivers and streams where they streams in those rivers and bays where they were born. They actually stay in the rivers for the first few years of their life until they reach a certain size to uh, migrate with the rest of the fish. So for the first few years of their life, they're in those streams and you can catch them in the winter time. We'll talk about gear really quick. <clears throat> we use, I typically use surf rods from eight to 11 foot in length, real size 4,500 to 6,500 and braided line. So you can launch those lures out as far as you possibly can. My favorite lore, and if my, any people from my YouTube channel is watching, it is time to say the SP Minnow. And this is a lore made by Daiwa, which is my favorite minnow lore to throw in salt water. It's very versatile. You can get different colors, and uh, you can fish it many different ways. You can slow retrieve it, fast retrieve. It's very versatile. Um... A lot of popular ways to fish for them as well is with blood worms, like I mentioned in the spring. Um, they're feeding on that in the spring, and then they switch over to clam and bunker a little bit later in the season. Um, but that is striped bass. The next fish is bluefish, and it is not uncommon to run in a school of to run into a school of ferocious bluefish while targeting striped bass in the spring. 
In New Jersey, the bluefish usually show up around early May and they'll stay all summer long throughout October. You can often catch them during the day, even in the summer, um, but I recommend you go early morning night at night if you possibly can. The low light conditions are very good. They're also a lot of fun to catch and you catch them on pretty much the same gear for striped bass. Um, they'll definitely test your tackle. They got razor sharp serrated teeth. So wire leader, I use, sometimes use wire leader, but you can get away with thick mono or fluorocarbon. The gears and lures are very similar. So once again, SP Minnow like you saw. This is a epoxy jig. It's a small minnow in, imitating lure. You kind of rip this along the water. Bluefish are a lot more aggressive than striped bass, so they will take a very fast retrieve. They're hunting down prey, they're targeting them, and you can basically whiz this thing by their face and they will attack it. Um, the next lure is a topwater plug. This skims along the top of the surface like a wounded bait fish, and these also do very well. I don't know if you can see there, these, this one's pretty beat up from the tooth marks of those fish. But uh, springtime is a great time to fish because there's so many options to fish for. Freshwater, saltwater, you got the trout stocking, you got bluefish in the spring, striped bass, and sometimes it's hard to figure out what you want to do. Uh, another popular way to bluefish is with chunks of bunker as well. You can just bait and wait for these fish. But um, I don't know if we played this video yet. This is me of catching a big old bluefish in the spring using my favorite lure, the SP Minnow. And uh, I, might, I might actually say at this point that the bigger ones I do let go because as they get larger, they're a little bit more oily. So I actually prefer eating the smaller bluefish. The next fish here is going to be the fluke flounder, also known as summer flounder here in New Jersey. This time of year, everyone is looking out to catch some of these delicious fish. They are by, by far one of my favorites to catch and eat. You can see all kinds of recipes on my channel about flounder. Um, you can catch them in the bays, ocean surf, inlets, estuaries, and piers. And the most common time to catch them is in the summer. They have a, kind of a short season from late spring and it stops in about September. My favorite way to fish for them is called jigging. I pretty much use a lure called a bucktail when I'm fishing for fluke in the summer. This imitates a bait fish. It's a very common rig and um, you can I, can use, I use different variations of this throughout the season. We're going to play this video here so you can see what I'm talking about. You pretty much cast this bucktail out at the bottom, out you pretty much cast this bucktail out, let it sink to the bottom, and in my hand you can see I'm pretty much aggressively jigging this rot, this uh, lure. What this does, it bounces this lure off the bottom, creates a lot of attention to it, and the fluke really key into this. You'll feel them, you'll feel a huge thump out of nowhere, and you know you have a fish. Fluke are bottom fish, they swim off the bottom. In that other picture there, when that fluke is on the rock, that is exactly how they swim on the bottom. That dark side is on the top. They have two eyes on the top of their head and they hug along the bottom. So using bottom fishing techniques and uh, making sure that your bucktail stays on bottom when you're fishing is very important. Um, so that's bucktailing. If you're lucky enough to catch a keeper, you will be eating good for dinner. I can tell you that. Um, using bucktails is probably my favorite way to fish for flounder. You can catch other saltwater species here in New Jersey. We have Tautog, and these are caught in the, in the spring. They're usually around close to jetties. They eat uh, pretty much live bait, like live crabs, fiddler crabs. You put them on a hook, drop them down next to the jetty, and you can catch Tautog, also known as blackfish. The other fish is sea robin, and these are kind of like a bycatch when you're fluke fishing. A lot of people don't like these fish. I actually tried cooking one up for the first time, and it was delicious. I, if you never had a sea robin, I would not be scared to eat one of those. Those are really good as well. Sand shark are down there. We have a lot of shark fishing here in New Jersey. Oyster toadfish, and you can find cow nose rays all the way up to 50 pounds here in New Jersey, even bigger than that. 
So there is a lot of different types of fish you can fish saltwater here in New Jersey. With that said, um, if you're interested about cooking fish or finding new recipes for inspiration at home, you can find out more of how I prepare and cook my fish on my YouTube channel, The Line Cook. Right there, I have fluke tacos. I do. I did a bluefish fried sandwich, more composed dishes, smoked trout, all kinds of different types of recipes on my channel. So you can head over there and subscribe to the channel, and I don't think you'll be disappointed on what you find. <clears throat> last part there subscribe and uh, I'd like to thank you so much for listening to this presentation for everybody who came I hope you learned something about fishing in New Jersey that you didn't know before and uh, if you did then that's a success and you can get out there and try to catch some fish it's a lot of fun I'm uh, really lucky to be uh, fishing all around New Jersey and I recommend you get out there yourself. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you, East Brunswick Public Library, for giving me the opportunity to do this presentation. And I'd like to open up to Q&A because I know there's going to be some questions about this. Where's the best place to buy tackle? So there are, uh, because I, I'm from Morris County, the only place that I really, there's a Fairfield Fish and Tackle there in Fairfield. That's a great little tackle shop. I like to try to support the tackle shops if I can. Um, but I'll go to Dick's Sporting Goods to get a lot of my tackle. Over here in the Somerset County area, there is the Sporting Life LLC. They have a really nice selection there as well. If you're heading down the shore, Grumpy's, uh, Murphy's Hook House. Um, a lot of, I like to support a lot of these tackle shops that are down the shore so that um, you know they stay open. What type of fish can be caught in the Raritan Bay, since that is one of our closest bodies of water? The Raritan Bay is has an amazing fishery. Uh, I fish the Raritan Bay for striped bass in the spring. I fish it for bluefish. A really great place is the Keensburg Fishing Pier, if you've ever been to the Raritan Bay. Um, it's, it's a really nice pier, and there's usually a lot of fish around there. You can get out there into deeper water. Um, but bluefish, striped bass, uh, fluke in the Raritan Bay, um, sometimes porgy, um, sea robin, and uh, a lot of different other types of fish, but I think bluefish and fluke right now is going to be your best bet in the Raritan Bay. And I think the last major question is, what is the tastiest fish to eat in the area? There, they give you a big question at the end. The tastiest fish to eat in the area? Um, okay, let's say, let's do saltwater for me is flounder. It is a delicious white meat. If you've ever had flounder in the store, people call it fluke around here, fluke flounder, same thing. Um, they're really, really delicious and a treat if I catch those in saltwater. Freshwater, I'm going to have to say rainbow trout. Um, they're delicious as well. Very mild meat and um, really delicious to eat. Someone also said, what's your favorite recipe on your channel? And let's tie into the eating thing. <laughs> favorite recipe on my channel. Oh, man. Um, that's a tough one. Um, I'd say one of the simple, I'm going to say one of the most simple ones that are delicious is fish and chips. Getting a fresh caught flounder and uh, making fish and chips, homemade fries, something simple like that is the best. Uh, you cannot beat it, you know, fresh fish. It's it's a real treat. Um, someone wants to know what fish should you not eat? Might be fun for catching, but not ones you want to exactly put in the pan. Yeah, so fresh water, anything in the Passaic River, do not put it in a pan. Um, I think most fish, saltwater, are edible, and you can eat them. I would advise against eating too much shark because of the mercury content of sharks. So... Um, if you're catching sharks I, I don't recommend you eat too much maybe one meal two meals aren't gonna kill you but if you're eating, eating a bunch of shark it is I don't think it's gonna be a good thing for your health and there was a follow-up question what is the length of a fluke that you can keep what is your range of what you're allowed to keep so what you're allowed to keep here in New Jersey is uh, three fish at 18 inches per day if you're fishing um, there's special regulations for Island Beach State Park uh, specifically that's two fish at 16 inches. So um, you're allowed to keep three a day. And um, 
that one I, I try to keep them a little bit over 18 inches that one in the video a little bit further back I, I threw back because he was a little too small um, he was right he was right on there I mean uh, if, if you were to step on him and flatten him out a little bit he would be 18 inches but I let him go he was just too close to call so 18 inches three fish per day and uh, that's until September I don't know the exact date I feel like it's the 15th September 15th and then this is going to be our last question, and I'm sure there's some backstory behind it. Is it true that you one time snapped your fingers at the ocean and a massive bluefish jumped into your arms? <laughs> I would say that that is not true. I mean, I, 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 I put in a lot of work to find these fish, and uh, sometimes it may look easy on the YouTube videos, but it is sometimes hard to find these fish. So when you do find them and you get a video of you catching a bunch in a row, it's worth it.